Uh, good evening, everyone. We'll like getting on the, on the air this evening. Just want to uh, thank you so much for joining us today. Um, anyway, this is The Vineyard. We appreciate you um, stopping in on this Sunday night and watching us. Um, if you'd like to help, send your check or money order by mail to James Barkus Ministries, Box 762, Manchester, Georgia, 31816. You can catch us Sunday morning, 10 a.m., Sunday evening, 7 p.m. We're going to upload this after we tape it. Uh, Wednesday evening at 7 p.m. Um, again, we're going to videotape and put it up because we're having a little problem live streaming uh, at this point. I may ha just have to uh, undo some settings and redo them. Um, but there's going to be special events throughout the year. But be sure to look for James Barkus Ministries Network on YouTube. By the way, our website is jamesparkusministries.weebly.com. jamesparkusministries.wordpress.com is our blog. Uh, also. And of course, we thank you. If you got prayer requests and testimonies, send them to us, jbmprayeratlive.com. You do not have a character limit with it. Uh, we do not participate in Twitter. Um, I explained it some sermons back, but briefly, there was some uh, mistreatment of employees or now former employees at Twitter. Uh, things going on when a uh, um, person bought Twitter and just literally run it into the ground. Um, we no longer participate in that. Not going to participate in it. Um, if and when he does leave and Twitter returns to some form of normalcy, I doubt it will, but uh, if it ever returns to some form of what it used to be, we may consider going back to Twitter, but as far as we're concerned, no. Uh, not until some major changes are made in leadership uh, at Twitter um, as far as governance and uh, reliability and really just doing what needs to be done. Um, and we thank you so much for joining us. If you'd like to book us for a special event, jbmworldhq at live.com. Yes, it is a hard line stance, but it's one that I'd rather take. And again, good evening. I'm James, brother James Farkas. We thank you for joining us today on um, the Vineyard. Um, earlier today, we talked about Ecclesiastes 3. There was time and a season and a purpose for everything in the heaven. Uh, you can see I'm now in my more comfortable uh, attire um, to teach a little bit tonight. And we are going on screen with the Bible tonight and um, there were letters in the book of Revelation written to the churches and this is the revelation of John the disciple who received that vision from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ Rest the revelation of Jesus Christ which God gave unto him to show unto his servants the things which must shortly come to pass. And he sent and signified by his angel unto his servant John, who bear record of the word of God and of the testimony of Jesus Christ and of all things that he saw. Blessed is he that readeth, and they that hear the words of this prophecy, and keep those things which are written therein, for the time is at hand. Now you might be saying, Brother Barks, why are you saying the time is at hand? Easy. Look at the circumstances surrounding us today. Our nation, the United States of America, was nearly ripped apart by partisan bickering. 
and I'm going to be honest. It was partisan bickering that was not needed. We should love our neighbor as we love ourselves. These are lessons that really should have learned a long, long time ago. Enough about that. <coughs> and this is the directions. John, to the seven churches which are in Asia, grace be unto you, and peace from him which is, and which was, and which is to come, from the seven spirits which are before his throne, and from Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness, and the first begotten of the dead, and the prince of the kings of the earth, unto him that loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood, and hath made us kings and priests unto God and his Father, to him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Just a moment while I fix this. Behold, he cometh with clouds, and also every eye, and every eye shall see him, and they also which pierced him, and all kindreds of the earth shall wail because of him, even so. Amen. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the ending, saith the Lord, which is, and which was, and which is to come, the Almighty. I, John, who also am your brother and companion in tribulation and in the kingdom and patience of Jesus Christ, was in the isle that is called Patmos for the word of God and for the testimony of Jesus Christ. I was in the Spirit on the Lord's day and heard behind me a great voice as of a trumpet, saying, I am Alpha and Omega, the first and the last, and what thou seest, write in a book, and send it unto the seven churches which are in Asia, unto Ephesus, unto Smyrna, unto Pergamos, unto Thyatira, Thyatira, unto Sardis, unto Philadelphia, unto Laodicea. And I turned to see the voice that spake with me, and being turned, I saw seven golden candlesticks. And in the midst of the seven candlesticks, one like unto the Son of Man, clothed with a garment down to the foot, and girded about the paps with a golden girdle. His head and his hairs were white like wool, as white as snow, and his eyes were as a flame of fire, and his feet like unto fine brass, as if they burned in a furnace. And his voice is the sound of the many waters. And he had in his right hand seven stars. And out of his mouth went a sharp two-edged sword. And his countenance was as the sun shineth in his strength. And when I saw him, I fell at his feet as dead. And he laid his right hand upon me, saying unto me, Fear not. I am the first and the last. I am he that liveth and was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen. And have the keys of hell and death. Write the things which thou hast seen, and the things which are, and the things which shall be hereafter. The mystery of the seven stars which thou sawest in my right hand, and the seven golden candlesticks, the seven stars are the angels of the seven churches. 
and the seven candlesticks which thou sawest are the seven churches. Unto the angel of the church of Ephesus write, These things saith he that holdeth the seven stars in his right hand, and who walketh in the midst of seven golden candlesticks. I know thy works, and thy labor, and thy patience, and how thou canst not bear them which are evil, and thou hast tried them which, they, which say they are apostles, and are not, and hast found them liars, and hast borne, and hast patience, and for my name's sake hast labored, and hast not fainted. Nevertheless, I have somewhat against thee, because thou hast left thy first love. Remember, therefore, from whence thou art fallen, and repent, and do the first works, or else I will come unto thee quickly, and will remove thy candlestick out of this place, except thou repent. But this thou hast, that thou hatest the deeds of the Nicolaitan, Nicolaitans, which I also hate. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. To him that overcometh, I will give to eat of the tree of life, which is in the midst of the paradise of God. And unto the angel of the church of Smyrna write, These things saith the first and the last, which was dead and is alive. Now let me get to the first one. The first love is the ministry. To send this word out. Yes, they're judging. Yes, they've got patience. Yes, they're doing most everything. But there is still that something that they are missing. And that is from that first work. And if they do not do that first work, they get their candlestick taken away. That was in the first church. Now we're to the church in Smyrna. And unto the angel of the church of Smyrna, write, These things saith the first and the last, which was dead and is alive. I know thy works, tribulation, and poverty, but thou art rich. And I know the blasphemy of them which say they are Jews, and are not, but are the synagogue of Satan. Fear none of those things which thou shalt suffer. Behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prison, that ye may be tried, and ye shall have tribulation ten days. Be thou faithful unto death, and I will give thee a crown of life. <clears throat> he that hath an ear, let him hear. What the Spirit saith unto the churches, he that overcometh shall not be hurt of the second death. Now, church in Smyrna, they're being tried, persecuted by those who are of Satan's influence. And they are expected of that reward, which is eternal life and the crown of glory and the escape of the second death. that they have a different letter than in the first one because the churches, there, there's not the modern communication like there is now where back then was not the modern communication era. Back then it took months to get a letter or a book to a particular region. It was a walk of faith, a journey of faith, and that is why it took that time to go from one place to another. 
That is why we see these letters to the churches and hear these things. So, now to the third church, and to the angel of the church in Pergamos, right? These things, these things saith he which hath the sharp sword with two edges. I know thy works, and where thou dwellest, even where Satan's seat is, and thou holdest fast my name, and hast not denied my faith. Even in those days wherein Antipas was my faithful martyr, who was slain among you, where Satan dwelleth. I have a few things against thee, because thou hast there them that hold the doctrine of Balaam, who taught Balak to cast a stumbling block before the children of Israel, to eat things sacrificed into idols, and to commit fornication. So hast thou also them that hold the doctrine of the Nicolaitans, which thing I hate. Repent. Or else I will come unto thee quickly and will fight against them with the sword of my mouth. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. To him that overcometh will I give to eat of the hidden manna, and will give him a white stone, and in the stone a new name written, which no man knoweth, saying he that receiveth it. So the Nicolaitans again, in Pergamos, they had it on two fronts, Baal and the Nicolaitans, or Baal and the Nicolaitans. They had it on two fronts, and therefore, that is why he told them, yes, they're doing great things. Yes, they're building followers. Yes, they're teaching the doctrine of Christ. But some get weak. Some get lukewarm. Some are persecuted and wonder why. And some of these letters are encouragement. Keep going. Keep the faith. And others, it's sharp rebuke. And that's why there's times in my sermon when I talk about these topics of being divided, being divisive, being wishy-washy, that there is sharp rebuke from me because we're not to be like that. We're to let our ye be ye, our nay be nay, because all else is evil. That is what is said in Jesus' own words. Now, I'll get the chapter and verse, but I know it's in there. That's why, 2 Timothy, Stay to show thyself approved, work when not only divine word of truth, but shun vain and profane babblings. For they lead unto more evil. That's a paraphrase, but oh, and let's not forget a workman that needs not be ashamed. And unto the angel of the church of Thyatira, write These things saith the Son of God, who hath his eyes like unto a flame of fire and his feet are like fine brass. I know thy works and charity and service and faith and thy patience and thy works, and the last to be more than the first. Notwithstanding, I have a few things against thee, because thou sufferest that woman Jezebel, which called herself a prophetess, to teach and seduce my servants, to commit fornication and eat things sacrificed unto idols. And I gave her space to repent of her fornication, and she repented not. Behold, I will cast behold, I will cast her into a bed, and them that commit adultery with her in great tribulation, except they repent of their deeds. And I will kill her children with death, 
And all the churches shall know that I am he which searcheth the reins and hearts, and I will give unto every one of you according to your works. But unto you I say, and unto the rest in Thyatira, as many as have not this doctrine, and which have not known the depths of Satan, as they speak, I will put upon you none other burden, but that which ye have already hold fast till I come. And he that overcometh and keepeth my works unto the end, to him will I give the power over the nations. And he shall rule them with a rod of iron, as the vessels of a potter shall they be broken into shivers, even as I received of my Father. And I will give him the morning star. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. I can say with certainty, Thyatira had a especially troublesome Jezebel. The Jezebel spirit that sometimes is present even today. And it doesn't even need to be a physical person. That temptation is one way. The temptation to um, take that extra drink. view a video clip of some kind of adult action to to do other things that are not of the kingdom of God. That is among the temptations. So, we're now to the church in Sardis, and unto the angel of the church in Sardis, right? These things saith he that hath the seven spirits of God, and the seven stars. I know thy works, and thou hast a name that thou livest, and are dead. Be watchful and strengthen the things which remain that are ready to die, for I have not found thy works perfect before God. Remember therefore how thou hast received and heard, and hold fast and repent. If therefore thou shalt not watch, I will come on thee as a thief. Thou shalt not know what hour I will come upon thee. Thou hast a few names even in service which have not defiled their garments, and they shall walk with me in white, for they are worthy. He that overcometh the same shall be clothed in white raiment. And I will not blot out his name out of the book of life, but I will confess his name before my Father and before his angels. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. <clears throat> there are some that are worthy and some that are not. Same can be said about preachers and teachers of the Word who do that prosperity preaching, but not the whole Word of God. Whereas I and others like me, we teach the whole Word of God. Even if it is on the screen that I read to you, and even if it is, based on the understanding that I receive from the Holy Spirit, from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And to the angel of the church in Philadelphia write, These things save he that is holy, he that is true, he that hath the key of David, he that openeth, 
and no man shutteth, and shutteth, and no man openeth. I know thy works, behold, I have set before thee an open door, and no man can shut it, for thou hast a little strength, and hast kept my word, and hast not denied my name. Behold, I will make them of the synagogue of Satan, which say they are Jews, but they are not. But do I. Behold, I will make them to come and worship before thy feet, and to know that I have loved thee, because thou hast kept the word of my patience, and I will keep thee from the hour of temptation, which shall come upon all the world, to try them that dwell upon the earth. Behold, I come quickly. Hold that fast which thou hast, that no man take thy crown. Him that overcometh, I will I make a pillar in the temple of my God. And he shall go no more out. And I will write upon him the name of my God, and the name of the city of my God, which is New Jerusalem, which cometh down out of heaven from my God. And I will write upon him my new name. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. Philadelphia. You know, when I hear the name Philadelphia, I think of the city in Pennsylvania that is nicknamed the city of brotherly love. I think of that, and I think of these disciples of Jesus Christ, that they are the ones coming to that New Jerusalem, to be that pillar around Jesus Christ, and that upon them will be written the new name, his new name, their new name. And that they too will be confessed before God the Father if they are found worthy. That's why each one of these say, He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. And unto the angel of the church of the Laodiceans, write, These things saith the Amen, the faithful and true witness of the beginning of the creation of God. I know thy works. That thou art neither cold nor hot, I would thou wert cold or hot. That means they were neither hot nor cold, they were lukewarm. Jesus would rather them be cold or be hot, because cold water refreshes, warm water refreshes, but lukewarm doesn't do much of anything. So then because thou art lukewarm, neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. He doesn't like lukewarm. Because thou sayest, I am rich, and increased with goods, and have need of nothing. And knowest not that thou art wretched, and miserable, and poor, and blind, and naked. I counsel thee to buy of me gold, tried in the fire, that thou mayest be rich. And white raiment, that thou mayest be clothed, and that the shame of thy nakedness do not appear. And anoint thine eyes with thy salve, that thou mayest see. As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Be zealous, therefore, and repent. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come into him and will sup with him, and he with me. Jesus is saying, anyone that answers the door to Jesus Christ, he will come in and dine with them. And they will be with him. That's why I opened my door to Jesus Christ, who is, who was, who ever shall be. I'll open my door to Him. In the name of Jesus Christ, to Him that overcometh, will I grant to sit with me in my throne, even as I also overcame and am set down with my Father in his throne. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches.
That ends the letters to the churches that are in the book of Revelation. You know, having read these letters, there was a time that I was a little more. I wasn't sure of myself. I had every bit of faith in Jesus Christ and in the Holy Spirit and in Jehovah, the Father in Heaven. But faith in myself, I had none. Faith in the pastor leading me, I had none. Because it was a time I was beginning to say, what path am I being led down? What path does God want me on? Am I supposed to be preaching? Or am I supposed to support in the media? Or help? Or just incorporate my work experience into the ministry? Those were all good questions and I am glad Jehovah, His Son, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit answered those questions for me when they pulled me out and had me separate myself from organized religion. I'm not a Baptist in the sense of being Southern Baptist Convention. I am not Catholic. I am not Presbyterian. I am not any of these denominations because denominations divide. I am a Christian in the sense that I believe the Word of God from Genesis to Revelation and everywhere in between. If I'm evangelical, then so be it. But there are some evangelicals that are preaching the prosperity gospel just to enliven their coffers and not really helping the people who are dying of thirst and dehydration of the Spirit. In the term of an uh, anime that I, I watch, Every now and then, autophagy of the soul, where the soul literally withers, weakens, and dies. I've seen that. It actually hurts. But I had to unlearn what was drilled into me for the better part of my life in order to take this path. Jehovah, His Son Jesus Christ, and the Holy Ghost had me go on. What I learned as a child It is radically different than what I've learned the last few years taking this leap of faith to start preaching and teaching the Word right out of the Bible. Stripped away of all the production, all the glitz, glamour, whatever. And to just simply do the will of Jehovah and His Son, Jesus Christ, and teach that Word. Even though I put it on screen for all of you to see in the broadcast, it is for our benefit that we learn His Word and that we do as Jesus would do. There were the bracelets a long time ago. What would Jesus do? WWJD with a question mark at the end of it. Guess what? What would Jesus do? If he saw what was going on now, I shudder to think. Because the first thought that comes to me is he would tell us to repent. Repent of our sin. The sin of pornography, the sin of fornication. 
the sin of overindulgence of alcohol and, and the indulgence into drugs. The wine is not evil, but the overindulgence and what happens when we become intoxicated of it and we do something that we are inebriated in to the point of not knowing what we're doing, that's the sin. Because what we do when we're sober is completely different than what we do when we're drunk. I, I know that when I... There was a hot summer day we helped to pick up trash at um, West Georgia Flea Market. It was hot, it was sweaty work, but I did it along with my dad, because we were helping the flea market out. And to be perfectly honest, I knew it had to be done because there were others that couldn't, couldn't do it or wouldn't do it. We were taught to help, and we were taught to give. So, friend of ours, I don't think he has beer. Beer and drink. And yeah, I had a few. I was down on them. One thing I found out was I laughed like a hyena when I was drinking. Anything was funny to me. Jack and Coke and your first time having it. Or to have wine with dinner. Overindulgence in what comes out of you in the inebriation. That has the possibility, depending on the person, of being evil. Because you wouldn't know what you're doing. You wouldn't be holding fast to the conviction. But substitutions can be made. You can enjoy cranberry black cherry juice if you feel like you can't handle alcohol. That's a perfect substitute for red wine. Sparkling grape juice. Apple cider. Things that are non-alcoholic, non-fermented. They're good substitutes. Myself, I drink tea with Splenda. Number one, diabetic. Number two, can't really afford any kind of drink. Except to brew tea and to brew tea in two gallon pitchers and to mix Splenda if I need to with it. Even Jesus drank wine because that's what was available back then. Spirit 
that comes out of you from overindulgence is what is evil. Akin to gluttony. But the seven churches have letters written to them because they were meant for encouragement. They were meant for chastisement. They were meant to communicate what Jesus Christ himself told to John. And if they didn't do what was said, he told them what would happen if they didn't do it. So it was encouraging them to repent of being on their laurels, or repent of being neither hot nor cold, but lukewarm, or to repent of their judgment of people because he's the ultimate judge. <coughs> Tomorrow is the national championship of college football and Georgia and TCU are in Los Angeles and they're about to play that game. There are those who, they, yeah, there will be overindulgence during those games. I'm not going to lie. But it is enjoying a beer with hot wings or what have you. Inherently evil, no. It's the overindulgence, the gluttony, the other stuff. That is evil. That's why I've said and still say that we all should gird ourselves in faith. Faith in Jesus Christ, faith in Jehovah, faith in the Holy Spirit helping us through. Gird ourselves up in faith so that we become cold or hot and refreshing and not lukewarm and spewed out by Jesus Christ. Heavenly Father, give us the understanding to do what these letters have said and to let our ye be ye and nay be nay and to shun profane babblings like you teach us and study the word and continue to study the word in the name of Jesus Christ I pray Amen Amen and Amen I want to say thank you for joining us today it is my hope, it is my prayer that you enjoy the rest of this week. Until Wednesday night, my friends, take good care. May God richly bless you and keep you.